The moon, familiar yet forever mysterious. It's been a source of wonder and speculation since the dawn of humanity. Now, cutting-edge technology is revealing a lunar landscape far stranger than we ever realized. Get ready for a journey of mind-blowing discoveries, bizarre formations, unexplained lights, and hints of a history that stretch the limits of our understanding. Prepare to see the moon in a whole new light and to be left with more questions than answers. We have the landing. Japan became the fifth country in history to reach the moon when one of its spacecrafts without astronauts successfully made a soft landing on the lunar surface early last week. However, space officials said they need more time to analyze whether the smart lander for investigating moon, aka SLIM, achieved its mission priority of making a pinpoint landing. SLIM landed on the moon at about 12.20 am Tokyo time, and there was a tense wait for news after the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency's mission control initially said that SLIM was on the lunar surface, but that it was still checking its status. Now, No further details were given until a news conference nearly two hours later, but even now, it's kind of hard to find information about the landing. I mean, what are they hiding from us? I need to know. The space officials believe the slim small rovers were launched as planned and that the data was being transmitted back to Earth, said Hitoshi Kaninaka, head of the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science, a unit of Japan's space agency. Now, up next, we have moon rocks. It has been found that the oldest moon rocks are older than the oldest Earth rocks. The oldest moon rock returned to Earth is an anothorsite that was found by the Apollo 16 astronauts. It's estimated to be around 4.46 billion years old. Now that is just insane. Now this date corresponds to the formation of a larger lunar impact basin from which the rock was thrown. Other studies indicate that the rock lay exposed on the lunar surface for 8.6 million years after it was moved again by the formation of a nearby crater known as Spook Crater. Again, it is an anothorsite, the rock that makes up the light-colored lunar highlight. Now, the oldest rocks found on Earth are about 4.28 billion years old. Now, ancient rocks are rare on Earth because of active geologic forces, including plate tectonics and erosion, recycling, and removing the oldest surfaces. But with not that many people on the moon and messing with them, it's easier to find them there than on Earth. Now, it's just crazy to me that these rocks are that old. Moving on to the weird substance. The discovery was made by a U-2-2 drive team member in July 2019 during Lunar Day 8 of the rover's mission, which was a part of China's Change 4 mission to explore the far side of the moon. They discovered an object in the middle of a small crater that was initially described by Our Space, a Chinese language science outreach channel, which could be translated as gel-like. So yes, there was a gel-like substance found on the moon. Now, Outside scientists suspected the substance was glassy material created by impact that turned out to be correct. In their article Earth and Planetary Science Letters, Gu Sheng and colleagues analyzed data from U22's panoramic and hazard avoidance cameras and the rover's visible and near infrared spectrometer VNIS instrument. They use a procedure called spectral unmixing to break down the measured spectra from VNIS to determine the likely composition and abundance of the material. Now the authors describe the material as a dark greenish and glycerin impact melt bacteria measuring 20 inches by 6 inches. Now these features are signs of possible presence of glasses, which are usually sourced from impact melts or from volcanic eruptions. Now let's discuss new elements found. The Indian Space Research Organization ISRO has made a landmark discovery on the moon's south pole using its Pragyan moon rover. A bunch of elements including sulfur, iron, calcium, manganese, oxygen, titanium, aluminum, corium, and silicon were identified. Notably, the absence of hydrogen raises questions regarding the presence of water ice in the area, a discovery scientists eagerly anticipate. Now, This achievement by Pragyan represents the first in-situ measurements of these elements at the lunar location. Although the South Pole was previously recognized for its large water ice deposits, this new data reshapes our understanding of it. Now, To identify these elements, the rover employed laser-induced 
break down spectroscopy, LIBS, a technique that implies intense heat to rocks, converting them to plasma, which is then analyzed. Now we have secret moon layers. A groundbreaking discovery has been found on the moon, as recent research has found evidence of hardened lava layers just 300 feet beneath the moon's dusty and cratered surface, hinting at volcanic activities from a very long time ago. While the findings are yet to be definitively confirmed, the Change 4's lunar rover's low-frequency ground-penetrating radar has been instrumental. The rover, under the leadership of astrophysicist Yang King Fen from the Planetary Science Institute of Arizona, has detected differences in subsurface materials. Now, this has led researchers to theorize that the moon experienced lava flows for a billion years longer than previously believed. The densest volcanic material deep below the surface is much wider compared to the shallower volcanic layers, suggesting a gradual reduction of volcanic activity over time. Now, the most extensive layers measured about 230 feet across, whereas the shallow ones span only 5 meters. Now, this tapering off of volcanic activity is indicative of the moon's diminishing internal thermal energy. Now, over time, the eruptions would have become progressively smaller until they ceased entirely. Current data points to three or four significant lava flow events in the von Karman's crater alone. Now, an ongoing investigation holds significant promise though, as if validated, it may reshape our understanding of the moon's geologic history, hinting at a more dynamic past with lava-filled landscapes, opposed to the kind of boring, dusty moon we see today. Now, did you know that there's water on the moon? Scientists say they have discovered water trapped inside tiny beads of glass scattered across the moon, suggesting a potential reservoir of this precious resource for future human activities on the lunar surface. The moon was long believed to be dry, but over the past few decades, several missions have shown that there is water both on the surface and trapped inside minerals. In 2023, scientists said that an analysis of lunar soil samples retrieved in 2020 during China's Robotic Changes 5 mission showed that these spheres of glass, rock melted and cooled, bore within them water molecules formed through the action of the solar wind on the moon's surface. Now, the moon lacks bodies of liquid water, but its surface is thought to harbor a fairly substantial amount of water. For for example, in ice patches residing in permanently shadowed locales and trapped in minerals. Researchers see promise in obtaining the water from the glass beads, perhaps through a heating process to release vapor that would then turn into liquid through condensation. Now, about 3.8 pounds of soil were collected in the Changes 5 mission, with 32 glass beads, tens to hundreds of micrometers wide, were examined in the study from the small amount of soil made available for this research. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty cool if you ask me. Our next topic is moon crystals. A rare lunar crystal found on the near side of the moon is giving scientists hope of providing limitless power for the world. Yeah, this sounds like something out of a cartoon, but it's real. The lunar crystal is made of material previously unknown to the scientific community and contains a key ingredient for the nuclear fusion process, a form of power generation that harnesses the same forces that fuel the sun and other stars in the galaxy. The crystal was found in the lunar basalt particles collected from the moon in 2020 and makes China the third country to discover a new lunar material behind the US and the former Soviet Union. The Chinese moon mission landed in December 2020 and was the first lunar sample return mission since the 1970s. Now, lunar samples were collected and delivered safely to Earth, and the crystal itself is transparent and roughly the width of a single human hair. It formed in a region of the moon that was volcanically active around 1.2 2 billion years ago. Now, one of the primary ingredients found in this crystal is helium-3, which scientists believe may provide a stable fuel source for nuclear fusion reactors. Now, the element is incredibly rare on Earth, but it seems to be fairly prevalent on the moon. China's next mission is expected to be Changes 6 in 2024, which will attempt to collect the first samples from the far side of the moon, which never faces Earth. Now, we have the early history of the moon. The moon is ancient and still preserves its early history, aka the first billion years. The extensive record of impact craters on the moon when calibrated using absolute ages of lunar rock samples provides a key for unraveling timescales for the geologic evolution of Mercury, Venus, and Mars based on their individual crater records. Remote sensing of other planets or the interpretation of geologic features via images and other data is based in part on lessons learned from the moon. Now, Before Apollo, for example, the origin of lunar impact were not 
not fully understood, and the origin of similar craters on Earth was highly debated. Next up, the moon is lifeless. The Apollo program was a super important moment in human history. For example, the program was responsible for landing the first human beings on the surface of the moon. However, the Apollo missions contributed much more than putting humans on the moon. It also produced a lot of new scientific data and discoveries, which expanded our knowledge of both the moon itself and our solar system. If you didn't know, the moon is lifeless. Well, unless there's astronauts on it. It contains no living organisms, fossils, or native organic compounds. Extensive testing revealed no evidence for life, past or present, among lunar samples. Even non-biological organic compounds are amazingly absent, and traces can be attributed to the contamination by meteorites. And last on our list is the origin of the moon. Unlike other recent robotic missions aiming for the moon's south pole, Japan's spacecraft SLIM is targeting a site near a small lunar impact crater called Sholi, with a plane known as the Sea of Nectar that scientists suspect was formed by ancient volcanic activity. There, it will investigate the composition of rocks that may help scientists uncover the origins of the moon. A closer look at such minerals could reveal information about the moon's interior structure and formation. However, sites of the crater ejecta are usually avoided due to the difficulty of landing within a small ejecta strewn area on the slope side surrounding a crater. Now, the SLIM probe has a vision based navigation technology, and the spacecraft will capture photographs of the moon's surface as it approaches and rapidly pinpoint the vehicle's location on maps previously sketched out by lunar satellites, adjusting its trajectory as it swoops in for its landing. Coming in at number 10, we have moon bats. Are there moon bats? Questions, answers. In 1835, a series of six articles ran in a New York publication called The Sun. Attributed to astronomer John Herschel, it was said that there were animals living up there on the moon and they'd been discovered via a high powered telescope. Of the animals living on the moon, there were said to be bison, goats, unicorns, tailless beavers, and I'm sorry, but beavers are nothing without their wompy behinds, and none other than bat winged humanoids who built temples, or so they said. Sadly, so the article claims, while these moon creatures had definitely been seen and noted, like 100% actual factual, the high powered telescope that they were spotted with was destroyed in a freak accident. The sun had set fire to the big lens and burned down the entire observatory that definitely existed in the first place. No, absolutely definitely was real and not in any way made up to sell newspapers. Moon bats! I think I'm here for it. Nope, I've checked. I am here for it. Coming in at number 9, we have the Alien Orchestra. On the last mission to the moon before the moon landing, something very weird happened. Apollo 10 was sent into space in May 1969, just one month before the official moon landing. The mission was a rehearsal orbit ahead of the landings, and it seemed to go smoothly, except for one eerie occurrence. It seems that the astronauts on board Apollo 10 heard something very weird as they travelled around the dark side of the moon. Some think it was sounds from a possible alien orchestra. The sounds were kept secret for nearly 50 years, but were released by NASA in 2016. Have a listen to what the astronauts on the spaceship said. Sounds like uh, you know outer space time music. Boy, that sure is weird music. It was described as a wooing sound, alien music. It happened at the farthest point of the moon from the Earth, a part of the moon where actually the spaceship had lost contact with NASA. You can't reach the Earth from there. You couldn't back then. So really weird. What were the sounds? We just don't know. Coming into number eight, what really happened on the moon? Russia got there first, or so some people say. Yuri Gagarin from the Soviet Union was the first man in space in 1968. Now some people believe that the Soviets also made it to the moon first, but the mission went wrong and the astronauts died, so they couldn't chalk it up as a victory. In fact, there is an enduring theory that two Soviet astronauts were lost in space and their existence entirely expunged by the Soviet secret intelligence. Conspiracy theorists claim recordings of the cosmonauts' final breaths were actually caught by listening posts around the world, including by the United States. Perhaps there are skeletons on the moon, if the bodies didn't float away. I don't think that can happen. Coming into number seven, nothing happened on the moon. It all happened in a studio. Oh, so the theory goes. Some people think that absolutely nothing happened on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Many people believe that it was all filmed in a studio. Some think that the studio footage was used only to reinforce the moon landings, as it was risky at whether or not cameras would work in the lunar vacuum. Others straight up do not believe we ever went to the moon at all, and they think that we filmed the whole thing just as a two fingers up to the Soviet Union who were desperate to win the space race. 
race. Some say that famous filmmaker Stanley Kubrick directed the moon landings after doing such an amazing and authentic looking job on 2001 A Space Odyssey which came out in 1968 and is still one of my favourite movies of all time. Coming in to number 6 we have the fake moon rocks. It is thought that the moon rocks brought back from the lunar surface are actually fakes from Antarctica. There was no moon rock taking from that moon. It is said that the Marshall Space Flight Center director Werner von Braun went to Antarctica in 1967 in order to gather lunar meteors. The conspiracy gets even wilder. It seems that von Braun was forced to go to Antarctica and collect the fake rocks because if not, the United States government would expose his secret past as a leading Nazi. Conspiracies, I love them. Coming into number 5, what is happening up there right now? It seems that all of the flags have turned white. This is actually true. The flags on the moon have turned white. Six United States flags have been planted on the moon to date by the six missions that have landed on the lunar surface, but conditions are wild and not all of them are still upright and none of them have retained their colour. To be a flag on the moon is to experience pure UV radiation from unfiltered sunlight. Over 40 years of exposure have absolutely ruined them. It's suspected that the first ever flag planted on the moon in 1969 has almost completely turned to ash. Coming into number 4, the curse of the moon. Is the moon cursed? Not only do people on earth get superstitious about a full moon, it seems that there is a theory out there that says that the lunar surface itself is cursed. All of those who have stepped on the moon are said to have met bad luck and misfortune. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first men on the moon, that we know of anyway, and they both struggled to deal with life back on earth. Buzz battled depression and an alcohol addiction. His father died, he got divorced three times, he got into a legal battle with his children and he was arrested for disorderly conduct. He left NASA and got a job selling used cars. In 2002 when he was 72 he punched a woman in the face. Now she was antagonizing him for sure but unfortunately for him it was caught on camera. Neil Armstrong also suffered. He quit NASA a year after the landing. He became withdrawn and disheartened because he didn't want to be famous. His daughter died, his marriage also fell apart, his mother and father died and a year later he had a heart attack. He also somehow managed to lose a finger in a truck accident. Michael Collins, the third astronaut who never walked on the moon, actually did the best out of the three. He stayed married, he worked several high powered high paid jobs and he claimed to have had a happy life after returning to earth. But once again, he never set foot on the lunar surface. Coming into number 3 we have the moon pyramids. Numerous sources have claimed to have picked up images of pyramids pyramids on the moon. Weird. So called UFO hunter Mark Swaller claimed that a NASA image of the Exudus crater has a pyramid in it. It seems that the Apollo 17 mission may have also inadvertently captured images of a pyramid too. So what could the pyramid be? Well perhaps number 2 can answer our questions. We have the alien base. In the 1820s a Bavarian astronomer Franz von Pula Gruthenhausen claimed to have seen entire cities on the moon with his telescope. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, I'm sorry. Astronomer Sir William Herschel also believed that there were alien civilizations up there too. Others think that yeah, they're up there but perhaps they've gone underground. So where's the evidence? It seems that underground tunnels may have been picked up by India's Chandrayaan 1 lunar orbiter. These tunnels on the dark side were likely actually to be in the products of tubes of lava flow that created a massive system of caves, but some people believe that these caves are inhabited by living beings. More recently, there was an article in the Daily Express, which I mean, take that with a pinch of salt, that claimed alien lunar bases were visible on Google Moon. So I guess we could check that out for ourselves. Google Moon. I'm still here for it. Finally, coming into number one, we have what Neil saw. As we know, Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon, delivering his notable phrase, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But what if Neil Armstrong did more than just walk on the moon? What if he saw things? It seems that there is indeed a theory that part of the reason he struggled to deal with life back on earth was because he was actually being heavily oppressed by NASA and the United States government because of what he really saw. Again, this is all just a theory, but it seems 
claims that the moon landing was initially censored for two whole minutes, and in that time, conspiracists say that both Armstrong and Aldrin saw UFOs. In fact, an alleged transcript between Apollo 11 and NASA has been released, during which Armstrong was reported saying the following Those are giant things. No, 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 it's not an optical illusion. No one is going to believe this. We saw some visitors. They were here for a while observing the instruments. There were other spaceships. They were lined up on the other side of the crater. There they are, and they're watching us. Again, we don't know if he actually said this, these are just the rumours, but what if he did see UFOs on the moon? Kicking off our list at number 10, the closest black hole. Yeah, let's start our list off with the nearest black hole. Are we good? How how close are we talking here? Gaia BH1, nice cool name, what a calming name already. Gaia BH1 was discovered recently by an international group of astronomers. That's exciting stuff on paper, but of course it's obviously a little terrifying. Sitting a mere 1,600 light years from Earth, Gaia BH1 travels through space and time itself. Now this black hole moves about 9.4 trillion kilometers with every passing year. Now if you want to have a few words with this big bad force of evil, point your telescope towards the constellation of Apicuus or Ipeucus. Ipeucus. One of the two constellations. Just went back and forth, you'll find it. Gaia BH1 is believed to weigh about 10 times the mass of our sun and it's three times closer to Earth than the previous record holder. Number nine, Leo 1. All right, shout out to all the Leos out there, you lions. This supermassive black hole is dedicated to you, Leo 1. In our neighbor galaxy, the Milky Way, I mean one, it's beautiful to see in the night sky, but two, it turns out it could be harboring a massive black hole in secret this whole time. Yeah, we have a few close ones. The second closest, but still equally as bad, Leo 1, was first thought to exist in 2021. So yeah, it's a recent discovery, which is horrifying, but all of these are. It's hard to miss especially when astronomers began to notice stars accelerating as they approached the center of this dwarf galaxy. Now, astronomers couldn't get a direct image of emissions from the black hole to then furthermore prove its existence, which is disappointing, but there's other ways to tell if there is a supermassive black hole. Like for example, quote, to prove that it exists now, two researchers have proposed a solution. Fabio Pacucci, an astrophysicist at Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics and lead author of the research, he said in a statement, quote, Rays of light cannot escape their event horizons, but the environment around them can be extremely bright if enough material falls into their gravitational well. But if a black hole is not accreting mass, instead it emits no light and becomes impossible to find with our telescopes. End quote. So it's there, but it's kind of invisible. Nice. How lovely is that to hear? That's great. Number eight, space spaghetti. Back in October 2018, a black hole was located in a galaxy 665 million light years away from Earth. Now, again, it was a bit obvious as there was a star being sucked into it. It was literally being devoured. It looked like cosmic spaghetti. I can't even imagine the force behind that. Now, it sounds like sci fi to us, but the event wasn't that surprising to astronomers. They surprisingly observed these violent encounters a lot. Now the tidal disruption events, or TDEs if you're cool, they happen when objects approach black holes and the massive gravitational influence they encounter generates tidal forces that stretch the star in one direction whilst also squashing it the other direction. So they actually refer to it as spaghettifying. Actual scientists are like, yep, yeah, it looks like spaghetti, that's for real. As this spaghettified material falls into the black hole, it generates a flash of light that astronomers can then observe millions of light years away, where we are. And then I come online and then tell you how spooky it is and to smash that thumbs up. That's what we do. Circle of life. Number seven, stellar vampirism. Yeah, that is a very real term that officials use for a cosmic dance. Vampirism. Nice. While some of these great forces are black holes, others may be confused as them. Now, it's equally fascinating to find something that you thought was a black hole because, well then, what is it? What once was believed to be the closest black hole to Earth, well, it turns out it actually doesn't exist. Yeah, I'm also a little relieved and disappointed. How is this possible? Possible. Back in 2020, astronomers discovered evidence that HR 6819, a black hole just a thousand light years away from Earth, was actually a triple system, with one star closely orbiting a black hole and another in a wider orbit. However, this is news. Other scientists had to come in and ruin the party. 
it's not the case anymore. Using two powerful instruments based in Chile that could produce more detailed images of HR 6819, astronomers found that it possesses only two stars only in a tight orbit, without a black hole. So what's happening here? What's this great force that we're detecting? Well, one of the stars is stripping away the mass of the other as they go round and round. And it's a phenomenon that's referred to, like I mentioned earlier, as stellar vampirism. Hashtag Team Jacob. Number six, students of the year. This was back in the 80s, but I'm gonna count it as recent because you know we're talking about light years and stuff. What, the 80s? Pretty recent in comparison. It's one thing for an experienced astronomer to find a black hole or to shatter your dreams of believing that you found a black hole, that's also fun. But for a group of students to find one back in the 80s, let's go, that's amazing. Like the Avengers of science. I couldn't even get a group project done with any coordination. You're telling me I could have found a black hole? I was wasting my time. Also, we're talking students as in high school interns, by the way. After analyzing archival observations from 1986 and 1987, these students found the object J1533-2727 is now 500 times dimmer than it was beforehand. So, something's afoot. The event was likely caused by a supermassive black hole 500 million light years away from Earth, which then crushed a star, a tidal disruption event, or again, TDE if you're cool, happened. So what we saw was radio jet just being projected out and then these students are like, oh cool. They made history while we were all skipping class and singing grease tunes on the stairs. I don't know, what did you do in high school? Number five, black hole duo. Two for the price of one. How fortunate are we? You're welcome. That's right, in recent news, two supermassive black holes were discovered by astronomers using the VLT, the Very Large Telescope, also a real name, how funny is that? This is over in Chile. Now this one here, or rather these ones there, they were both staring at each other very still. They were 89 million light years away from us in the galaxy NGC 77. Now these black holes, they're big, they're powerful, but it appears that they're moving towards each other very slowly. That's concerning, yeah? A little bit? Karina Vogel, an astronomer at the Strasbourg Observatory in France, explains in a statement that these pairs of doom can form when huge galaxies merge and the supermassive black holes at the center of each sets a course for a collision. Now, it takes a while to happen, but they will meet. It's the first time in history that we've found two supermassive black holes that are this close to each other. Yeah, they're only 1,600 light years apart. It sounds far, but after this whole list, it's not that far. Experts can confirm that they will both merge into one monster black hole within the next 250 million years or so. So spoilers, but yeah, they're gonna meet and it's gonna be loud. It's gonna be real loud. Number four, rogue black hole. It's nice when black holes sit still and you know, just look at each other for a bit. I don't mind if they meet in 250 million years, so long as we can see them and keep track of them. This next one here, number four, not so still. This one's uh, a little random, this little guy. For the first time ever in 2022, astronomers spotted a rogue black hole wandering in the cosmos. Poor guy, he must be lost and hungry. Scientists have long predicted that stars between 7 and 20 times the mass of the sun would eventually go supernova and then collapse into a black hole. That's not news per se, but this is the first time that scientists have observed this type of isolated black hole. Using data from the Hubble Space Telescope, astronomers were able to detect a rogue stellar mass black hole 5,150 light years away from Earth. And it's heading towards the center of the Milky Way, it seems. Now this black hole is relatively lightweight at around 7.1 solar masses, but it's definitely something you don't want to get caught up into. Number three. Red black hole. Oh, oh, we're adding colors now. Okay, that's, didn't know that, great. What could this one possibly mean? Red, is that like more scary? 13 billion light years away from Earth, I can't even fathom such a distance, but astronomers found the earliest evidence of a black hole, a black hole birth rather, at the beginning of the universe. Yeah, this guy was the OG BH. He was born 750 million years after the Big Bang during an era called the Cosmic Dawn, which sounds so cool. But during that time, a transitioning red quasar came along this flashing bright red speck of light that appeared to be a very early galaxy that right on the verge of collapsing into a supermassive black hole. Yeah, so any second now, really. These hybrid objects have been speculated to exist but never proven until 2022. Number two, number two. First black hole photo. Here we go. Back in 2019, you probably remember this. I have it on my wallpaper for the longest time. Over 200 scientists from 20 different countries all put their big brains together in order to get the first photo of a black hole. Yeah, how amazing was that? We've seen them in movies. Interstellar almost gave me a panic attack in IMAX, but this here is real life. Science involved here to even make this image possible is mind bending. Right at the center of the Messier 87 galaxy, just a mere 55 million light years away, this black hole has been 
ripping apart anything in sight in a galaxy in the Virgo cluster. But how in the world did scientists get a photo of something that sucks in light? That's the, how does that even work? Well, the Event Horizon Telescope shows us the dark center, this hole that swallows up life as we know it. Now, it looks like a ring, a ring that you can maybe look around. But the light that we see in this photo, these radio waves that are represented here, that's coming from all around the black hole. It's behind it, in front of it, the sides. It would be impossible to see with the naked eye, of course. But after the team made a virtual telescope the size of the Earth, yeah, they can do that now, they were then able to see the radiation surrounding the black hole. This is something we barely understand in the science world, and the fact that we can see a blurry photo of it, honestly, it's more than we deserve. I want to make that my wallpaper again. That's sick. Remember the first time I saw that, I was like, yes! And finally, number one, the fastest black hole. The biggest black hole that we have found so far is said to weigh about 40 billion times the mass of our sun, or about 20 times the size of our solar system. That's so scary. That's impossibly large. Some of the outer, slowest orbiting planets in our solar system, like let's say Neptune for example, it takes Neptune 165 years to orbit our sun once. Now this huge black hole, the one that's, you know, 20 times the size of our solar system, it orbits once every three months. Do we know how fast that is? That's insane. Neptune is considered slow, going at 12,148 miles per hour on the outer edge of this black hole. The outer edge of this black hole is moving at half the speed of light. That's how fast it's going. Things like the Usain Bolt of black holes. It's unbelievable. The crazy thing about black holes being this large though, other than how fast they're moving, is that it's believed that spaghettification wouldn't kill you in this case if you were to fall in to one. It's thought that you would actually survive, just, you know, you wouldn't be able to escape to tell the tale because of that whole nothing escapes the black holes thing that they have going on. That probably has something to do with it. Or maybe you'd be transported to another universe that maybe was spawned by said big black hole. Or maybe I watched Interstellar last week. I'll never tell. In our number 10 spot, we have the Mars Quake. Picked up by NASA's InSight, the robot on Mars, on April 6, 2019. In this specific recording, three sounds can be heard. The first two are suspected to be wind on Mars and a Mars version of an earthquake, and then there's sound from the robot at the end. This is wild to hear and definitely makes you wonder how often the Mars quakes happen. Hopefully not too often because if we plan on moving to Mars someday, all the high maintenance humans will not be okay with that. Okay, fine, myself included. Okay, on a serious note, the sound is pretty intense. Have a listen. In our number nine spot, we have a Saturn thunderstorm. Apparently ever since the Voyager flew past Saturn, scientists have taken note of potential lightning deep within Saturn. The sound that is captured here, to me, it sounds like the intense bubbling of water in a pot, or perhaps the crazy static in between radio frequencies. It's hard to imagine a world like Saturn that may have such intense lightning storms. Imagine Saturn is a world where it always rains, and if so, then I have to say that Saturn is probably where hell is. It is believed that the word Saturn is related to Satan, so it works. Take a listen to hear these staticky crackles that are believed to be sounds from a lightning storm. In our number eight spot, we have Saturn's radio emissions. Another recording from Saturn, and where this one came from, is super interesting. In December 2016, NASA's Cassini spacecraft crossed the plains of Saturn and took a number of recordings of the planet. This one in particular literally sounds like the opening to the English dubbed 90s version of Sailor Moon. My fave version of Sailor Moon. Even though that is an unpopular opinion, it's how I got introduced to the show, okay? So it it'll always hold a special place in my heart. Anyways, this sound is creepy, and it is the sound of the radio emissions leaving Saturn. Take a listen. In our number seven spot, we have Jupiter's bow shock. This is a sound that was recorded by the Voyager spacecraft as it was passing through the region of Jupiter. It is said that the sun emits a type of solar wind, which can be repelled by a strong magnetic force such as that of a planet. It is deflected and the energy is apparently converted into thermal energy. This is known as a bow shock and what you are about to hear is the sound of a bow shock. The sound reminds me of what I can imagine as an instant catastrophic tornado. Have a listen and let me know if you agree in the comment section below.
In our number six spot, we have Jupiter's moon. Jupiter's moon, also known as Ganymede, apparently makes some pretty strange sounds, and I'm pumped to share it with you all. NASA's Galileo spacecraft robot studied Jupiter and its surrounding area, and it picked up on some plasma wave observations, and this confirmed that the moon has its own magnetosphere. These sounds are quite spooky and remind me of the sounds that you can imagine some alien communication device to make, it feels straight out of a movie. Because maybe it is. Psych, this isn't real, and no one actually ever went to the moon. Dun, dun, dun. Just joking. These are the spooky sounds that Galileo picked up. In our number five spot, we have the Earth's Whisper. I'm sorry, Melissa, did you just say the Earth's Whisper? You're going to show us the sound of the Earth talking very quietly? Yes, in a matter of speaking. Literally, somebody save me from myself. Okay, so NASA recorded the Earth making some pretty crazy noises, and apparently the noise was coming from charged particles emanating from the Earth. It honestly sounds like birds calling to each other on a hot summer day, or what I imagine the rainforest to sound like, but any Anyways, it's pretty cool to listen to, so take a listen. In our number four spot, we have Callisto. Callisto is another Jupiter moon that we've recorded some audio of. This recording sounds an awful lot like Callisto is filled with C-3PO's from Star Wars, as that's the only way I can describe this sound. It's very, you know, robotic. And at the same time, it sounds like it's heavily burning something, but I'm not sure if that's just the recording device or part of the sound. Apparently, Callisto has the weakest interaction with Jupiter's magnetosphere of any of the four largest moons. Take a listen and let us know your thoughts. we have the sounds of Jupiter. The sounds of Jupiter are intense. It sounds like crystals dropping mixed with the sound that you hear in movies when things are going back in time. It could also seem like small mice making these sounds too. It's pretty extraordinary and quite different from a lot of these other videos. It's interesting how consistent the sound is also. Apparently NASA's Cassini spacecraft captured this sound when stopping by Jupiter for a gravitational boost while on its way to its next destination. Have a listen. Coming up in our number two spot, we have the sun's vibrations. I couldn't decide if this should be number one or two on the list because it's just as cool as number one. Maybe better, that's debatable. What you're about to hear is actual recorded sound from the sun, whoa. The vibrations in this video may appear to be low, but what's interesting about the vibrations is that they appear to be positive. It feels good to listen to its hum, like it has a warmth to it. It, that will lift up your spirits if you continue to listen. Which honestly makes sense. I don't know why, but it does. Anyways, listen to the sounds of the sun and let me know if you feel and understand what I'm talking about. In our number one spot, we have the black hole. Okay, I had to put this one in first because the concept of the black hole is just mind blowing to me. A black hole is essentially a region of space time where gravity is so strong that nothing, you know, no particles or even electromagnetic radiation such as light can escape from it. People believe that beyond a black hole are other dimensions and universes. It's a thing of fascination for many and so of course when I came across this sound bit, I had to include it in this video. This is a sound bit that shows the force of a black hole and how terrifying it might be to get close to one. Not that we ever would, unless of course we build a spacecraft in our lifetime that gets us close to it, but unless that happens, the likelihood is slim. Anyways, it sounds like what I imagine ghosts or ghouls sound like when they're moaning. <laughs> Take a listen. We're starting off this list with a recent discovery of possible hidden structures on the far side of the moon. Now, this isn't necessarily scary, it's just 
kind of cool, but uh, who doesn't like cool stuff, right? Scientists have examined data from China's Chang'e 4 lunar satellite, which is exploring the far side of the moon. By using ground penetrating radar, they have detected echoes beneath the lunar surface, possibly indicating hidden underground structures. The anomalies that have been spotted suggest there could be a series of networks and tunnels or lava tubes underneath the moon's exterior. These subsurface formations could offer shielding against temperature fluctuations and cosmic radiation, making them good options for you know, future human habitation on the moon, because, you know, who wouldn't want to leave the luscious forests and bright blue sky right here on Earth to go live in tunnels uh, deep beneath a dark, desolate, rocky mass? Number nine, the strange substance. China's U-2-2 rover, a part of the Chang force mission, discovered an unusual gel-like substance on the far side of the moon. The rover came across this material in the Von Kerman crater. It was found within a small impact crater with the substance's appearance and color standing out from the surrounding lunar soil. The discovery was made during the rover's exploration of the lunar surface using its visible and near-infrared spectrometer, or VNIS. But as to what the substance is, we're still not 100% certain. Several possibilities were proposed by scientists, including the idea that it could be melted glass, formed by the heat of a meteorite impact, or it might be linked to the moon's volcanic activity. The U-2-2 rover had been active since early 2019, conducting various scientific observations on that far side of the moon. Number eight, the mystery cube. In 2021, China's U-2-2 rover was traversing the moon when it spotted this far off in the distance, this uh, image here. People were pretty confused when this image was released, saying it looked like there was some kind of hut or like cube on the surface of the moon. Uh, for a while, we weren't sure what this object was. Was it an alien spacecraft? Was it some kind of ancient shack? A monolith, similar to the one in 2001, a space odyssey, perhaps? I do hate to disappoint you all, but the answer is far less fantastical than all those wild ideas. On closer inspection, it turned out that this mysterious cube was nothing but um, a rock. It's a moon rock, so it's still something. It's apparently really huge too, but you know, not a highly advanced space cube. In fact, it wasn't even in the shape of a cube at all. But uh, for a while, people's imaginations were acting up. And we're back to China's U-2-2 rover again with another discovery. This time, two mysterious glass spheres were spotted on the far side of the moon. These objects stuck out like a sore thumb as they glistened against the dry, dusty landscape of the moon's surface. It was an odd find because the objects looked perfectly spherical. They almost looked like a pair of large glass candle holders, at least to me anyway. Scientists aren't sure exactly how these formed, but they hypothesize they could have been created for, from a, like a high-speed impact with a meteorite. Number six, the UFO. This incident occurred on the Apollo 16 mission, NASA's fifth successful trip to the moon. After the Apollo 16 mission, astronauts John Young, Thomas Mattingly, and Charles Duke were beginning their return trip when they captured about four seconds of footage, and in it, they spotted whatever this is. It appears to be a saucer-like object hovering above the moon. Looks like a UFO to me, like a classic UFO, I might add. Looks like something right out of a 1950s B movie, and it's got that like dome shape. The footage was shot with a 16 millimeter motion picture camera, shooting at 12 frames per second from a command service module window. I've always wanted to have a UFO experience, and uh, going to space, also a dream. A be a little bit scary, but I, I still want to do it. So, I don't know. Spotting something like this while on a return trip from the moon, I would just never be able to stop talking about it. I very much want the world of Star Trek to be a reality. So, seeing an alien spacecraft, that's a step in the right direction, unless they mean to do us harm, but uh, I don't like to think about that. Next up, we have alien bases. So, Scott Waring is an extraterrestrial researcher self-proclaimed. He's definitely an enthusiast, though. He's made some pretty bold claims about the presence of alien life, including moon-related stuff. He has tons of videos zooming into craters on the moon, spotting strange shapes that he describes looking like structures or crafts of some kind, too out of place to be natural rock formations. He's claimed that many of the structures he spotted have conveniently disappeared on subsequent scans of Google Moon, which, according to him, 
points to the fact that some of these things are being erased in order to hide the truth from the public. One of his finds is this strange shape here though, found on the far side of the moon in the Zeeman crater. Certainly an interesting formation. It looks to be perfectly rectangular, almost like it could be an entrance to some sort of underground base, which is exactly what he and other conspiracy theorists believe it to be. What do you think though? Is this just a natural formation, a case of paranoia, or, or could this actually be some sort of alien or man-made structure? Pareidolia, by the way. Is it a case of pareidolia, not paranoia? Anyway. <laughs> and that's gonna bring us to number four with the alien craft. This is another strange image that Scott Waring uh, pointed out. Between Von Karman and Davison Crater, it lies this. Uh, Waring believes that this is an extraterrestrial spacecraft. Writing on his blog, I found this structure in the center of a crater on Earth's moon. The structure closely resembles a ship from the Transformers movie. The, the craft is triangular in shape but with a lot of odd bulges. The object is very shiny, more so than anything in its surrounding area, which tells me it's metallic. He went on to say, I feel this craft may still be salvageable and possibly could be used to transport humans to other planets in the Milky Way. So Scott certainly gathered a lot of info from uh, this image of a rock. I mean, an alien spacecraft, sorry. But he is an extraterrestrial researcher after all. All I can say is I'd love it if you were right, but that just looks like a rock to me. It's a cool looking rock. It's got some nifty grooves in it and uh, kind of kind of spaceship looking in, in, in shape maybe, but I'm not sold on it. I don't know. What do you all think though? And number three, we have moon dust. Now this is found all over the moon, not just on the far side, but it is pretty dangerous and might I say, terrifying. Moon dust, also known as lunar regolith, is a fine powdery substance covering the moon's surface. It's composed of tiny particles created by the impact of meteoroids over billions of years. And now the thing is, it's called dust, but it's not as innocuous as the dust we have here on Earth. Moon dust is sharp, it's abrasive, and it's highly reactive due to the lack of weathering and erosion on the moon. It clings to equipment, which could potentially cause damage to spacesuits, spacecraft, and machinery. Inhaling or ingesting moon dust uh, would be absolutely hazardous to uh, human health as it causes like respiratory and other health issues. Not that you'd be breathing without a helmet on the moon anyway, but you know, it does pose a challenge for maintaining equipment and could lead to mechanical failures. And during the Apollo missions, astronauts reported difficulties with moon dust sticking to their spacesuits, which raised concerns about potential long-term health risks. In at second place, we have the castle. This image here was taken on an Apollo mission. Gotta say, pretty weird. Now, just like with a lot of uh, stuff on this list, this could just be a case of pareidolia, but it really does look like some sort of structure. There appear to be three support columns holding up some kind of tower. Another interesting part about this thing is that it's much brighter than the surrounding area, although, that could just be a trick of the light. I really try not to let my imagination get too out of control looking at stuff like this because I just really want there to be definitive proof of alien life, but I, I think it's important to keep a level head and look at this stuff objectively. So I'm just throwing it out there to you guys, you know, to see what you all think. Once again, what are your thoughts on this? That's what the comments are for. And coming in at number one, we have transient lunar phenomenon. A transient lunar phenomenon, or TLP, for short, are unexplained and temporary changes observed on the surface of the moon. The strange phenomena has intrigued astronomers for centuries. One common TLP involves the sudden appearance of glowing or like colored patches on the moon, which can last for minutes or even hours before like fading away. Scientists have proposed a number of theories to explain these weird glowing shapes, but none have been fully confirmed. One hypothesis suggests that outgassing, the release of gas from beneath the moon's surface might be responsible. This gas could escape because of geological activity or meteorite impacts. The energy released from the impact of a meteorite could create a temporary glow or eject material that reflects sunlight. But this theory doesn't account for the duration and the varied nature of TLP. And some TLP reports date back to the 18th century and they're hard to study because they're so unpredictable. We don't really just know when it's gonna flare up. Astronomers are using advanced technology to try and document and explain what's going on here. But at this point, we still don't know. Starting off in our number 
number 10 spot we have Dragonfly 44. This is what is called an ultra diffuse galaxy and it is located in the Kama cluster. This galaxy is of concern because of some interesting observations that were made in relation to it back in 2016. Basically, this galaxy was first discovered because of the influence it is having on our Milky Way galaxy. Astronomers noticed some strange sort of ripples in our galaxy and subsequently realized that this was due to the pull of Dragonfly 44's gravity as it orbited around our own. Of course, once it was realized that this galaxy was the culprit, experts started looking into the galaxy more, and that is when it was realized that this galaxy is actually quite dark. In fact, we can only really see this galaxy due to four bright stars that shine out of the otherwise dark, gloomy galaxy. This has led to the hypothesis that this galaxy must be largely made of dark matter. This is extremely interesting because not only is dark matter one of the most pressing mysteries of space, but this galaxy was found to be made up of 99.99% dark matter. Some even say that this galaxy shouldn't even really be able to hold itself together with so few stars. This is all to say that this galaxy is extremely interesting, and with further investigation and research, it may just be the key that helps us understand what in the world dark matter really is and what it's made of. In our number 9 spot today, we have cosmic disappearance. Some sort of unidentified thing that is larger than anything in our known universe is sucking portions of the Milky Way away. I know, it's terrifying, and it definitely is concerning, considering it's the place that we all call home. This discovery came in 2009 when researchers first found a cluster of galaxies moving at extremely fast speed towards a small area of sky. This area is located between the constellations of Centaurus and Vela, and whatever this whole thing is, it has experts completely stumped as to what it could be. For now, it remains a space mystery that has been dubbed Dark Flow so that it can sit on the shelf with the other terrifying space mysteries like dark energy and dark matter, whatever those are. In our number 8 spot today, we have Tycho. This is what is being called a zombie star. This frightening name comes from the fact that this star was once a white dwarf, which is basically what is left over after a star exploded, but its mass was not enough to become a neutron star or a black hole. What's different about these zombie stars, however, is that they have gobbled up a bunch of mass from another nearby star, which then leads to them exploding all over again in what is called a type 1a supernova. These blasts are insanely luminous and bright. Some even say that they have the light of one billion suns. This is all to say that they are insanely interesting objects and events that exist in the universe, and they are also thought to be helping scientists study what the heck dark energy is. In our number 7 spot today, we have Oumuamua. A few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system, and they called it Oumuamua, and it was widely agreed that it was an interstellar comet that had swung out from around another star. Upon closer examination, however, they realized that something was propelling it and causing it to accelerate, and this is when the debate started, because they just don't really know why. Evie Loeb, who's a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail, which is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that accelerates by being pushed by solar radiation. Other scientists didn't agree with this and instead said that it's possible that hydrogen ice could have melted off of the object in a way that would mimic a rocket engine or something of that nature. Avi then wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before it reached our solar system. I guess all in all we just have to wait it out while the scientists debate and gather more evidence to really know what is going on behind this one. In our number 6 spot today we have the wandering moon. The moon is apparently slowly, sadly, moving away from earth. When I say slowly, I mean slowly as it's at a rate of about half an inch a year, but still, when we're talking about our cosmic best buddy, the moon isn't only the thing that lights up our night sky, the moon plays a vital role to our lives here on earth due to its great companionship and its gravitational pull. The moon's gravity is what causes the tides of our ocean, so without our moon, who knows what would happen to our marine ecosystems. The moon is also responsible for the axial tilt of earth and how it stays in relatively the same place. Without the moon, we either wouldn't have any tilt at all, or we would be tilted all the way. This would mean that we would either have no seasons, or some of the most extreme seasons any of us have ever seen. While it doesn't appear the moon is going anywhere soon, sometimes we just have to 
keep an eye on her to make sure. In our number five spot today, we have the mysterious gap. Basically, a new analysis by scientists at MIT of ancient meteorites found something new and super interesting. In the early solar system, there was what is referred to as a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas that rotated around the sun, and eventually it coalesced into the planets that we know and love today. So this new study and analysis suggests that this sort of mysterious gap existed within this disk somewhere around, I don't know, 4.567 billion years ago, and it was in an area near where the asteroid belt is today. The reason this gap is mysterious is because it isn't quite clear what the cause of this gap was. There are a few possibilities, including Jupiter, during the time when it began to take its shape, because of its extremely large gravitational pull, it could have pushed gas and dust towards the outskirts, which then would leave a gap in the developing disk. There are other possibilities, but regardless of whatever caused this gap, it is said to have likely served as a cosmic boundary that kept material on either side from interacting with each other. In our number four spot today, we have a Blitzar. So normally, when stellar black holes are formed, they are the result of a large star exploding into a supernova. This then has the core normally collapsing into either a neutron star or a black hole. Blitzars are a hypothetical type of neutron star where they spin so fast that if they slow down, they'll collapse right into a black hole. I do understand that they are theoretical at this point, but some researchers believe that these stars might be an explanation for fast radio bursts should we find that they in fact do exist. In January of 2015, there were seven different events that experts thought could be attributed to Blitzars, but it is thought that they actually might occur once every 10 seconds in our observable universe. The magnetic field around a Blitzar would clear anything prior to it turning into a black hole, which means that no nearby material would fall in upon the initial collapse, which means that there is no burst of gamma rays or x-rays, which is usually seen when other black holes form, and this is exactly why, if they do exist, they are hard to detect. Should we come to find concrete evidence of their existence, these guys would prove incredibly valuable insight into the formation of black holes. In our number three spot today, we have Hoag's object. Okay, so there are different shapes to galaxies. That's not the weirdest thing in the world. You know we live in a spiral shaped one, it's beautiful, there are other galaxies called ellipticals that are more like oval shaped, but one galaxy in particular, which is now called Hoag's object, is truly like none we've ever seen. This galaxy has a yellow core, and this core is surrounded by an outer ring of blue stars that are much younger than the core, but in the middle between the two, there's just nothing, and researchers are completely stumped as to how this could have formed. The galaxy was first discovered in the 1950s, and since then, there is one leading theory as to how it could have been formed, but it still isn't concrete. Basically, this leading theory suggests that perhaps a small galaxy sped through a larger disk-shaped galaxy, which then created this bizarre situation, but the problem with this theory is that there are no signs of any nearby galaxies that could have served as this sort of bullet in this scenario. If that happened, it also would have sped up the core of Hoag's object, but we can observe it as moving quite slowly, so that also rules out this theory. There have been other galaxies discovered that have some similar characteristics to this one, but none share all of the qualities seen in this very bizarre galaxy. In our number two spot today, we have Humea. Back in 2017, this dwarf planet passed between Earth and a distant star, which allowed scientists to get a better look at it, and thus they were able to discover some new findings. Humea sits in an area beyond Neptune that is called the Cooper Belt, and it is actually one of the largest objects inside of the belt. Before the new discoveries in 2017, we already knew that this dwarf planet was weird. I mean, it has kind of a weird elongated shape, it has two moons, and its day only lasts four hours, which means that it's the fastest spinning large object in our entire solar system. It is thought that its fast spin might be responsible for its weird shape, but either way, scientists were quite surprised in 2017 when they realized that this strange planet actually has rings. This means that Humea likely had some sort of collision, and probably not too long ago, relatively speaking. This collision likely happened somewhere from 1 billion to several hundred million years ago, but the search for the origins of these rings brings a whole new mystery to the dwarf planet. In our number one spot today, we have magnetars. These space things are actually a type of neutron star, but what makes them different is that they have this insanely powerful magnetic field. Like we are talking 1,000 times stronger than a regular neutron star, or about a trillion times stronger than the magnetic field that Earth has. That means that these type of stars would have enough magnetic power to wipe every credit card on Earth, even from a distance halfway to the moon. They're the most magnetic stars in the entire universe. This is all very cool and interesting, but it's also important to note
note that if you were to venture within about 600 miles or 1000 kilometers of one of these stars, you would die very quickly. The magnetic field would destroy your body. It would tear electrons from your atoms, which would then basically turn you into a cloud of monotonic ions or single atoms without electrons. This is all to say that next to black holes, these are one of the most bizarre objects in the entire universe.